Hello class, and um, we are going to go over chapter one in a bit more detail than we did in class earlier today. First, um, you'll see that there are several slides, and if you look in the syllabus under the course schedule, you will see the learning objectives for this chapter that you should focus on, namely three and one, uh, three and five, excuse me. So we want to explain that language, that accounting is the language of business. We are going to cover chapter one. First and foremost, we are going to explain why accounting is the language of business. Accounting, let's change this pen color so you can see it is the language of business. How we communicate that language is through financial statements. Those financial statements, as you will see, include a balance sheet, an income statement, a statement of retained earnings, and a statement of cash flows. As we progress to the chapter, you'll notice um, that we'll be discussing all of these. So first, we want to show that people make decisions. Then those decisions are actually converted into transactions. Usually, those transactions require money. And then because it has some financial consideration, which is money, they generate a, um, we have to actually do a report, which would be the financial statements or the journals. So there we would have our financial statements and then our journal entries. So who uses this accounting information? Well, as you can see, these individuals. First and foremost, we have individuals. So you probably all have bank accounts that you actually invest your money in, maybe checking accounts and savings accounts. And then if you actually rent, possibly because you're in school, you have budget and monthly expenses that you look at. Investors want to know that they are investing. Usually you invest in with stock. So for example, Apple is a company and if you invest in their stock, you want to make sure that you're going to get dividends and a return. It creditors are usually banks. So those are financial institutions. And they want to make sure that they can get paid. Then we have regulatory bodies, and you would definitely want to make sure that you have all of these acronyms in um, at your disposition. So I would recommend at this point you put these acronyms into an Excel workbook. That way you can keep them readily available. Obviously, the IRS, everyone has to pay taxes, including organizations. And then you have the Securities and Exchange Commission. And that requires public companies who sell stock. You might have heard of IPO, Initial Public Offering. And if you are trading your stock on the U.S. Stock Exchange, then you need to produce financial statements, and the SEC is the regulatory body that does that. Now, not all businesses are for-profit. There's non-for-profit businesses, such as the IRS and the government, and um, universities and institutions of higher education are usually non-for-profits. So there are two types of accounting. Financial accounting is mainly for outside um, of the entity. So this is the financial statements that I talked about earlier, the balance sheet, the income statement, the statement of retained earnings, and the statement of cash flows. This is the format in which we communicate the language of business to the outside world. Managerial accounting, on the other hand, is for those inside the organization, such as the managers and the employees. And this information is less regulated by GAAP, which is generally accepted accounting principles. And GAAP is basically the standards that govern financial accounting. So financial accounting is GAAP. Managerial accounting doesn't have to be according to GAAP. That's more for internal forecasting and projections and less of um, rigid, rigid. So now there are different forms of businesses. And so we're going to talk about sole proprietorships. We're going to talk about partnerships, LLCs, which are limited liability companies, limited liability companies and corporations. 
So first you'll see a sole proprietorship is that alone, one owner, and he is personally liable. Then you see partnerships have two or more owners and their liability can be general or limited. And then an LLC, you are not personally liable and here's where CPAs and attorneys fall into. And then corporations, it has many owners. You usually sell stock. You can own a stock of Apple and be an, their owner, but you are not liable for the um, liabilities of the company. And we're going to define liabilities going forward as items that you owe in our accounting equation. So the proprietorship, as I mentioned, is a single owner. They're really small. You are personally liable for all of the business um, uh, at, oh, credits, credits that are needed. Then the partnership, the key here is two or more, and the key is that they flow through. So whatever money the partnership makes, it actually goes to the partners. So in that case, you would do a flow through, and that would be a K-1 form that you'll learn about in tax that you would produce to produce your 1040, which is your individual tax return. And then you can have a limited liability partnership and that you're not, you're actually, it limits exactly that, not what you owe the organization. An LLC, another acronym that you should have for your Excel workbook. Here, the business is liable, not the um, individual owners for any debts. And you can have one owner or, or, several, or many owners as long as it's the limit liability. And we have the same situation as a partnership where it flows through. Now a corporation, here's where you can raise large sums of money and like I mentioned, initial public offering, another acronym, is basically where you do that. And I'm going to bring up now our accounting equation that we're gonna talk about later, which is assets equal liabilities plus owner's equity. Here is where the initial public offering comes from. It's where you issue stock, and we'll talk more about that. And now the key here is that is legally distinct from his owners and you don't have a personal obligation. And the problem with a corporation is it has double taxes, right? The corporation pays taxes and then the shareholders pay taxes on dividends. So that is one of the biggest negatives of a, forming a corporation. The other piece is that they elect a board of directors and a board of directors has two subsets, an audit committee and a compensation committee. And that compensation committee usually is talking about the compensation of the CEO, which is the chief financial officer. As you see, we have several uh, acronyms, so it's very lucrative for you to keep track of those so you don't forget. Moving on now to our second objective, we're going to talk about the principles of accounting. So basically, all of accounting follows GAAP, Generally Accepted Accounting Principles. This is extremely important. You will hear me discussing GAAP throughout various chapters, so be sure you understand what the acronym. The standard setting body that issues GAP and formulates it is the Financial Accounting Standards Board. And this is for the US. Now internationally we have IASB and that is the International Accounting Standards Board. And they issues what's known as IFRS, IFRS, which is International financial reporting standards. And this is on an international basis. So GAAP is only for the US and all of these others are for over 120 different countries. This is critical for your CSR ethics quiz. That is worth about 50 points um, or more of your assignment of your class grade, so you want to make sure that you have this available to note that accounting is there to help people make decisions and it's helping you know, individuals inside and out of the organization to make decisions on the scarce resources that the entity has. And it has to be relevant and faithful, represent, faithfully represented. The financials have other qualitative um, characteristics such as you should be able to compare financial statements between organizations. It should be verifiable, timely, and there should be some type of understandability to the financial statements. The constraint is cost-benefit analysis. 
so basically what that means is that the cost should not outweigh the benefits. If it's too cumbersome to calculate, then you can probably book it all in its entirety. We're going to talk about each of these individually now. So relevant is basically it has to determine and make a difference to the decision maker, has to give that person some value or predictive ability. Material means it has to be significant, right? If um, $10 might be significant if you only make $100, but $10 may not be significant if we're talking about a million dollars. So materiality is irrelevant to how important it is to the individual situation. Now, faithful representation, the key is it has to be free from bias and free from error. Now, that doesn't mean it, it, we're hoping it doesn't have error, but if you do under, if you do discover an error, you should correct it. So that means that basically the people who are using the financial statements can say that, that okay, it is reliable and it is recorded neutrally. Comparability is where you can compare um, other companies in the same period. So for example, if you want to compare Home Depot and Lowe's, you should be able to do that and because their financial statements should be presented in the same fashion. Verifiability is that you should be able to check the information for accuracy, completeness, and reliability. Obviously that it's free from error, complete meaning all of the entries are recorded, and reliable that you can actually, what the information is telling you is true. Timeliness is obviously the information is not useful to you unless it's presented in a timely fashion and you have it prior to making a decision. Understandability is the information has to be transparent so that you can make a reasonably informed decision. The cost constraint, as I mentioned earlier, is the cost should not exceed the benefits. So if the cost should be less than the benefits that it provides, then it is worth it preparing and doing. We have four assumptions that surround our financial statements and our qualitative characteristics. So first, an entity is basically that it's a separate economic unit. A going concern assumption is that it will continue. So the company will continue to exist within the next year. Will continue in the next in the future years. Then the historical cost principle is basically where we're recording everything at cost. As you progress through accounting, you'll see that we might record items at market value or fair market value, and we'll discuss those in higher level accounting classes. The fourth assumption is that there is a stable monetary unit assumption, which means that inflation is ignored, and basically the dollar's purchasing power remains stable. So now I would direct your attention to your textbook and in short exercise 1-5, this is also um, located for you in the My Accounting Lab practice problems that are ungraded. So take a moment now to go ahead and complete that. This will conclude this video.